Oh, good people. Welcome back to the channel today for a, another review. We're here to talk about Five Nights at Freddy, which is available right now in theaters, also on Peacock today. Uh, we both had a chance to check this out earlier this week. We we're finally getting a chance around getting around to a chance to talk about it. And as I mentioned, it is in theaters and on Peacock today. And that's truly uncharted territories usually if there's a streaming release the theatrical release is weeks or something beforehand uh but uh peacock and universal they they had the confidence behind this and then it paid off because this movie is tracking 85 million dollars opening weekend which is insane before i even get into this movie i have got to make a fair warning that i have not played the game I have watched a lot of Twitch. This obviously is great for content, whether you are on the 3D Oculus or whether you're playing it on um, any console or even PC. So, yeah, that's that's sort of my introduction to the name. Um, we were at New York Comic Con. There was a big panel for this. I uh, got a chance to meet Jason. I mean, Jason Blum had uh, endless things to present that weekend. Uh, and, 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 and frankly, this is his second movie this this month not this year this month yeah. so why not check this out there's a lot of reason obviously this has a cult fan base 85 million dollars opening weekend for a movie that is releasing on peacock at the same time when wow. i left the screening kid said this was perfect my adult self said what did i miss <laughs> because i got to tell you that it wasn't all clicking for me. There was absolutely some things that I just was just lost about. I don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the things I did like. First of all, the animatronics, top tier. And thank God I have not seen this when I was a kid because I would never go to Chuck E. Cheese ever again. <laughs> but in fact, as an adult, I'm ready to go to Chuck E. Cheese and go see what they talking about because it seems like <laughs> it seems like there's some beef out there that I don't know about. But I'm ready to pull up on that. Um, I really did love the music. And it's by no other than the Newton Brothers, who, if you just watched the recent Goosebumps, the same folks. So I, 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 you know, a lot with the production was stellar. The production overall was good. Blumhouse production, the name alone sales. Um, but I was very impressed by not only the music, uh, but the production. And I'll talk a little bit more about the acting, but truly um, the highlight for me was the music. And then when you even look, if, if y'all don't know who the Newton Brothers is, go look at their resume. Because when you talk about some of the hottest shows out right mm -hmm. now, the fall of the House of Usher, if you're not watching that, go do so. The Midnight Club, which was very good last year, if you didn't watch that. Obviously, I mentioned Goosebumps. And also, they're accredited to X-Men 97, which is coming out next year. That's only the things I listed within a year and a half span they when you talk about music for for films and television oh yeah they're 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 among the elite so but yeah my, my biggest thing is that i just I'm, I'm not the demo i'm not the demo there's things that just didn't work for me um there was moments i was just completely confused that maybe i thought i need to know more about the source material there was times where it was sort of funny it definitely was nothing but imp implied horror and gore. I mean, somebody definitely get their body chewed halfway off. There's even great. moments where you're just like, oh, this is definitely Saw, which is really fitting because Saw X just came out and then yeah. they didn't go full the full way with it. So I'm like, oh, what well, blown opportunity there. But clearly because the kids love this. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that I felt like they serviced the kids and their cult audience good. If you are an uncasual you're going to be like me and like, I think I missed something. <laughs> I think I missed something. But that's enough of me talking. And every, you, every one of you all probably mad at me right now because I love this so much and how good it was, <laughs> which is fine. Don't take it out on zero. Um, and I already know she has opposite feelings of mine. So let's hear it. How, okay. how, how, how great was it? Tell me how perfect it was. It's like those kids our that came Our feelings. Out. Stop it right now, first of all. <laughs> our feelings are not that different. I am purely looking at this 
for the kiddos. And y'all, Najir and I have been holding our tongues because we wanted to get it all out in front of the camera right now. But the one thing that we did talk about was I usually have this feeling um, in my time in the fandom. But when I hear, quote unquote, the younger horror generation, <laughs> that means me. That's I imagine myself to be keep, keep part of the younger. That. <laughs> keep, keep telling yourself Shut up that. and go get my cane. Go get my fucking cane. <laughs> I, I I think of myself as the younger generation of horror fans. I was born in the 90s. Most of the horror boom was in the late 70s and 80s. I get it. That means me. I'm the young guns. This was the first time that I've seen a new film. I watch it and I realize I'm not the youngest generation of horror fans anymore. There's, there's a new generation that's coming in and this, this film was not made with me in mind and that's okay i really do think that is okay um what i will compare this to is resident evil because i am a big resident evil fan wait wait and wait those... which one be clear be clear well all of them all of them I, I love all the movies i love all the games i even like the remake i like the the crappy um animated uh movies i Egon. like that new one with lance that was that was mid but i i'm a fan so i was there anyway Okay. Um, but you know, it's it's a slippery slope with these adaptations, and really, the only way that they work is if you cater to the fans. And if they don't cater to the fans, I I I I don't know what to tell you, man. We just saw this happen with uh, the Super Mario Bros. movie, um, and we could compare it to that as well. And I was also at Comic Con. I was also in that panel for for Blumfest when Jason Blum came out and he talked about all of his movies. He brought out the director. Her name was Emma Tammy, and she talked a little bit about how they were going to well, you know, past tense, but how they decided on their avenue with this film. And they made a very bold choice. And although a bold choice it was, and it definitely has and will continue to ruffle some feathers i do think it was the choice with the best outcome so the choice that they made was for the fans this movie was specifically made for five nights at freddy's fans jason blum also mentioned hey if you're not inside of this demographic and you pull up to the film and you enjoy it that's awesome but it's not made for you in mind and I respect that because an IP like this, the stakes are very high. I don't think you would want to mess this up. And you know the Blumhouse fans because I I saw the potential with the Chainsaw Awards last year when the, the kids came out of the woodwork for the Black Phone and they just swept. So I know the potential. I know how high the stakes are for this. So when I was in the theater, um, there was a lot of children there was a lot of children okay but i myself i played the first game i thought it was fun it was you know edgy it was unique it was a little different and and scary for the record the games are not ma made for children that just kids just kind of found I, it yeah i, I mean I, I think it's because and I, I was saying it's coming out of the theater i think it's popular because it's content worthy. Mm -hmm. I think people look at it and they say, I can make, con I mean, the jump scares is clearly what everybody's making their montages around. Like, that's just what it is. So people like, it's fun to see people react or people like to see me react. It's content worthy. And that's mm -hmm. why I like, when you talk about like, when I, when I, when I talk about the source materials, like I, I don't see how the game adapts to a, a script that gives you a well, it didn't. It, it, it didn't at all, and I, I, and I'm guessing that's what you're saying. Like they decided to say, we're just going to create our own story of things with with the characters or whatever that you know. Like either way, it's still, well, yes and no. Okay, yes go, and go no forward. to that. Yes, because um, this whole new story with Mike, who's played by uh, Josh Hutcherson, mm -hmm. you know, he's in a hard place. He has to, uh, you know, emotionally and financially support his younger sister because he is her primary caretaker. Yeah. He's only a guy. 
He's dealing with his own trauma from his childhood, so he's mm -hmm. got to somehow make this work. That's not found anywhere in the games. That yeah. is a completely new concept. But everything yeah. else surrounding the lore of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, all that stuff is canon. And playing the first game, you're not going to get all of that. Um, I think there's actually 11 games total. So it is deep. There are 11 games. There's probably like 30 books uh, ranging from young adult novels to graphic mm. novels. Um, there's even like, uh, you know, canon web stories. The amount of lore that Five Nights of Freddy's <laughs> possesses is yeah. almost unfathomable. And the the writers definitely did do their research i wouldn't be surprised if they even hired some consultants who were in the community to get it right okay. and you can tell because comparing it back to when uh resident evil welcome to raccoon city came out as a fan sitting in the theater they would throw in these easter eggs and you know when they happen all the fans in the theaters get excited so for somebody like me who's not a, fa a fan of five nights at freddy's when that happens in the theater and, you know, a character says something or it pans to, uh, you know, a, a corner of the scene and we see something and the audience gets a little restless and then they start whispering, that's a good sign. Because that tells me that that means something in the greater fandom that you had to, you know, do your research to figure that out. And I think at the end of the day, that's really all the fan, what the fans want. And these kids, and also let me tell you why this is very clever to use Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, and market it to children and have it be gateway horror for them. It's an interesting concept. So Five Nights at Freddy's, the games originally, or the first game originally, it's not made for kids. It's got scary jump scares. Actually, the whole game is just how long can I avoid a jump scare and not die? So here's, here's the simulation. A child comes home. I say, Mom, I want to play Five Nights at Freddy's. My mom tells me, no, that game is for adults. I say, okay, so what am I going to do as a six-year-old, a six to eight-year-old? I'm going to go on the internet. I'm going to Google. I'm going to find all these books. I'm going to find these two-hour-long uh, video essays explaining all the lore, which is honestly a, a lot more graphic than the games are themselves about you know uh killing sprees in the 80s child abduction what they do with the bodies which was all put into the narrative of five nights of freddy's the movie um so all those kids that are you know eating it up are seeing the lore that you know they had to do some deep dives for at least our child version of what a, a deep dive is on the big screen and that's really exciting and that's why we have x amount of millions but the other reason why this is great a, a, a perfect opportunity for gateway horror is this is a pg-13 movie so you know if i'm nine years old and i want to get in i'm gonna have to bring my parent with me now if you're a cool enough parent to go along with your kid to see Five Nights at Freddy's, I think there is a 40% chance that that parent might be a horror fan. And guess what? A nice little treat. We got Matthew Lillard popping up. And this movie is it's littered with scream references that, you know, this younger, newest generation of horror fans, they're not going to get. But if their parents are cool enough to, you know, bring them in to see Five Nights at Freddy's and get into the genre and you know maybe get a little bit addicted like all of us once were when we were nine or ten you know later down like later down the line in in their you know experience in the genre when they move up in the genre and they're able to watch things like scream it's all gonna make sense and it's really just the best i know grooming has a terrible connotation but it's grooming the next set of horror fans and this is a perfect opportunity for gateway horror and i think that it accomplished everything that it was set out to do now me not a crazy fan of the series i don't know all the lore sure maybe i've watched one or two youtube videos i cannot lie um but again it's not for me i did have a fun time watching it in the theater and i guess really as a nerd, I love when nerds get what they want. So when the kids start getting animated, that makes me happy because I feel, felt that way when I'm watching Resident Evil and the Easter eggs are in there. You know, a Jill sandwich. Like, 
who the hell knows that if you don't play Resident Evil games? You know what I'm saying? So I think that, you know, it, it was a bold choice to make this movie for the fans, but I just don't think it would have worked otherwise and it wouldn't have this this extreme of an impact. And sure, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't for me. I am. I'm disappointed in you. Come on. You said all that and did not mention what was for you. And obviously Matthew Lillard being in there is yeah. like that's that was like oh Thank cameo you. but it's actually ends up being like a character <laughs> but it's a mm -hmm. um but um obviously screen folks and, and Shaggy if you don't know like the sure. iconic voice of Shaggy um but I again I, I felt like the animatronics was definitely the highlight of it and and, and mm -hmm. the, the costumes of these things that the mechanics and all of that top tier yeah. Uh, Do you want to know a fun fact that I learned at the panel, actually? What? Um, well, obviously, the only way that this could be done is practical effects. If you pull mm -hmm. up a CG animatronic suits, it just won't work. Because yeah, um, yeah. after all, it's based in reality. So the uh, Freddy Fazbear and, and Bonnie Foxy, the whole crew, uh, they're actually unofficial Muppets because they were created by jim henson's studio yeah which, i know, didn't know if that you're yeah. gonna do it you gotta do it right <laughs> and it definitely shows it definitely shows because the the way that the light hits the suits and yeah. how realistic they are in their movement and when um the characters the human characters yeah. interact with them you like you really can't beat it yeah and like you know the, the film is predictable at times there's moments where totally. it should be funny but really not so funny to me um and then i tell you it just gets kind of lost and it just gets scrambled and then it's just all over the place so i i think like even the end i just was just not really high on I, it's for me and, and i guess this is a safe measure for me it's like easily go check it out on peacock i would never say go spend the money on it but hell 85 million dollars later um don't listen to me on that note go 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 do what you're gonna do or go listen to what your kids tell you or whatnot right uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i i just think that like it, i just really struggled with certain elements with the film um it just didn't it just didn't land in all cylinders i will say that josh uh josh even when you really want to start to invest in all the different things that um that he's enduring like the trauma as a kid, the, the 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 potential hard decisions, you know, obviously the care for his his sister, the the, the financial struggles, uh, the, the 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 terrible job, you know, he just does his best. So like, I kind of get behind that, but at the end of the day, like, it, it still doesn't execute in its entirety. And lastly, Abby, by all means, is my favorite character, which is his younger sister. Um, she is very much the composite of the viewers because every single thing that this character says, I'm literally saying it right out of my mouth. I mean, she is keeping it real. Mm -hmm. she, there's a moment there's a moment where she's like, OK, that's good and all, but we need to get out of here right now. And she says it with the right <laughs> urgency and at the right moment, like forget all the sentimental stuff. I need to get out of here right now. And I'm like, y'all don't have time to be talking about this. You need to get out of here right now. So. I thought the script was really done well on that note. Again, sometimes I laugh. It was, and I love dry humor, but I think you got to like, like extra dry, like extra dry, like salsa water dry humor <laughs> for this one. Um, but, and then also the last thing I will say is that I thought they could have played up the Five Nights thing just a little more. Yes, it was Five Nights, but maybe caption screens or maybe just something that made you really understand why the title is the title because mm -hmm. easy could have been like nights at freddy's or whatever but the fact that it's five nights you think like well what what is it about that and any other horror movie or any other night that designate or any other movie that designate a time it's sort of predicated to the plot of the movie you name five nights at freddy it, it comes off the tongue very well let's let's call it what it is but why five nights? That literally mm. was the question I left. Why five nights? Why is it five nights? Why couldn't it be four okay. nights? And even and there's even a point where you're just like, this dude should not go to work tomorrow. Work is closed. <laughs> there's no reason for you to go to work tomorrow. Maybe the day after that, but you don't go to work the next day. And mm -hmm. then I will say that there's a cop that he encounters. Oh, she's the terrible. 
she's the she's, she's the scariest person of the of the entire yeah. film. She's the white overzealous cop that comes in that knows about you that's incriminating you about things that you're like, wait, what? And like that presence to me is just kind of like, yeah, this isn't going bad. This isn't not going to go. This yeah, this won't go bad. Because it's clearly going to be by the hands of her. Like she's coming in this joint. Like, yeah, well, you're not, you're not qualified for this job. Oh, something happened last night at your job. It's your fault. I'm here mm -hmm. for it. Oh, you, you, you on these meds. Let me go ahead and throw these away real quick. Like you don't need these. Oh, I forgot about the meds thing. Mm. I have never understood a person who is suffering. So, 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 so Mike takes a job at night. Which means that he needs to be awake during his night shift. There's and then no take reason, a sleeping pill. There's no reason for Mike to be medicating himself during his job hours. That's so why true. is his medicine at his at the job with him? The <laughs> next day, sure. If he has sleep insomnia, insomnia or, or sleep, anything sleep related, you take it during the period when you're ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Why is your medicine with you at your job, sir? <laughs> you're not taking it there. And hey, the fact that's that a good question. He's very ambitiously looking to sleep at his job. And I know he's, I know y'all gonna say, well, he felt closer to his, uh, I'm blank, blank, sure. blank. Mm -hmm. But no, <laughs> no. My guy, that's why you can't keep a job. And the whole job, the whole point is that you're trying to secure a job record for the courts to protect your sister. Mm-hmm. Confused. confused i arrest my case and there's a stinger at the end um so i guess that makes some people happy but i have no clue what this little balloon thing or little man what was it uh, a balloon boy sitting in the passenger mm -hmm. seat i have no clue what that means so more I questions than answers for me sure i have a hypothetical answer to your title question um i don't know if this is an answer i don't know if this is even makes sense but we're getting a franchise out of this we are 100 percent getting a franchise the end of the film tells us that um the fact that we have 11 more games to deal with in different locations with different animatronic characters that have their own relationships to freddy fazbear and his gang that's what we're gonna get but now i'm thinking about the games and even though the games are the, the the games that follow the original Five Nights at Freddy's are their own thing, they're all called Five Nights at Freddy's. Da 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 da. I I think it's just for consistency's sake. I really do. Okay. Well. <laughs> I do. I mean, like. <laughs> no, I'm not discrediting you. I'm just saying, like, okay, good idea. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway you all can go see five nights at freddy's i enjoyed watching the haunted horror house of chuck e cheese uh and, and <laughs> whether or not <laughs> whether or not i think we've seen the same thing or not who knows but 85 million dollars later and much success and honestly just to, 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 to be fair here i i would like to see a sequel I, not, now that I got a little bit on, 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 on in terms of like from the uh, cinema standpoint, let's see what the next one does. You know, Word. I, I want to see would, more of those suits. I want to see more of the puppet suits, to be completely yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love oh, to see some more. Creepy. So, yeah, y'all can catch me at Chuck E. Cheese. I'm going to be seeing Chuck E. <laughs> on a one on one fade. It's, it's going down. <laughs> YouTube ready. <laughs> nah, but, nah, but seriously, um, if y'all do love this franchise, y'all let us know in the comments uh, about it. And, and if there's things that you heard me say that I was confused about, please do not direct me towards a book or a game. <laughs> Explain it in the comments here. It's my non-experience to the franchise perspective of the new film that... You would hope that the film would introduce and make one people want to be a part of the community and the franchise. But this one definitely just left me with more questions. I, it did not make me pick up a desire to play the games. I still watch it on Twitch, which is fun because I just like how people are having fun with it. But it also, I also don't see no plot with that. You know what I mean? And I, I, my last comment is, is, as a person who loves Day by Daylight, I can never sit here and tell you, here's the plot of one of my favorite games because there really isn't. And if they made it, they got a comic, so they got something to kind of work with. But if they did make a movie, which I'm sure they are at some point, what would it be like? Four survivors escaping a franchise IP killer. 
But what is it all nah, about? They, they, they would have to with one of the original characters. Come and on. They, they Come absolutely on. would. They absolutely would. And they would just have to flesh out the origins of that character, which is a mm-hmm. movie in its own. Mm-hmm. And then these survivors, all four of them, you're going to need to know about where they came from. So like, you know, but either way, I don't know. That's enough for my rant. Just help me out in the comments, folks. Have a great. <laughs> Please help them. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, check it out on the Peacock. Go to the theaters if you must. For Zero and I, we are out. We'll catch you back for more reviews and content very soon.